guys! My name is Kay and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, isi-share ko sa inyo yung routine ko when I go to my work. Uh, so if you want to see more, then please keep on watching. So if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Keisha and I am a Penai UKRN and I am based here in Derby. I am currently working at the NHS and I have been a registered nurse since February this year. So, medyo bago pa lang ako. So, yung mga information na maibibigay ko sa inyo is just based on my own experience. So, magkakaiba tayo ng experience, magkakaiba tayo ng workplace. So, my uh, experience might be different from what you're currently doing or what you are expecting. So, I'm currently working at the surgical ward. So, sa trauma and orthopedics. So, TNO and it's a surgical ward. So, nung nalagay, nung na-assign ako sa ospital, uh, na-assign ako doon sa ward na yon. So, 9 months na ako doon and I've been qualified since February. So, magsi 6 months na akong RN doon. So, medyo na-accustom na ako sa routine nila. Although, there are a lot of things that I don't know and I can't do. Kasi I need some training. Uh, currently, I'm still on the stage of uh, doing or completing my training. Pero yung ibang mandatory trainings, nagawa ko na. So, I can do my tablets, I can do my IVs, but I can't do cannulation. So, may mga ibang uh, skills, nursing skills, na hindi mo pwede basta gawin without proper training and sign off. So, that's what I liked about working here. Kasi they will not let you go to work unequipped or at least you ha have the right to tell them that you're not confident enough to do it. Uh, if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that I came from an outpatient setting. So, I worked in an outpatient setting for almost four years. So, medyo I, um, I have lost touch with my uh, nursing skills. So, when I came here, it's like a whole uh, completely different process kasi although pare-parehas lang yung mga ibang mga gamit but the equipments are different so you have to uh, make sure na sanayin mo yung sarili mo or at least uh, refresh your memory about those uh, equipment or those uh, yung mga gamit nila dito it's better na parang wala ka masyadong experience kasi you're uh, starting from scratch. So, para kang nagsisimula. Advantage mo if you have uh, ward experience or if you have uh, experience previously. Pero, you're gonna start from scratch here. So, at least, okay na din. <laughs> na, hindi ka masyado marunong. At least, you're willing to learn. Uh, yun lang naman yung importante. And that's what keeps me going. <laughs> yung motivation to learn. Kasi, every day is a learning process. So, nursing is a learning process. So, you have to uh, learn every day. So, sa mga makakasama mo, you'll learn new things every day. So, ayun nga. So, kamusta ba yung workload? So, I am currently working as a full-time nurse here in the NHS. So, I'm working 37.5 hours uh, in a week. So, that's 3 to 4 shifts in a week. And that's uh, long days. So, ang pasok is from 7 a.m., till 7.30 p.m. if you're doing a long day and if you're doing a night shift uh, parang ganun din 7 o'clock in the evening till 7.30 in the morning so I love doing days I don't like nights kasi nadi-disrupt yung tulog ko and uh, medyo nahirapan akong mag-adjust sa tulog. So, minsan napiling ko na susuka ako sa duty kapag night duty ako. And, kapag ka day ka kasi, the time goes very swiftly. Unlike sa gabi, may idle moments kasi the patients are sleeping. So, sa morning, galaw ka lang ng galaw. So, hindi mo naman malayan. Hand over na ulit. So, yun na nga. So, simulan natin uh, yung araw natin. Uh, by the way, hindi pala ako nag-shoot sa hospital and I'm not mentioning where the trust I'm working at. So, pala na kayo to figure it out kasi uh, I just wanna make sure na safe din ako at ayoko kung masyadong mag-disclose ng information. I just want you to have a brief idea of how a nurse here in the UK works and kaya niyo yan. <laughs> Alam ko kaya niyo yan kasi when I first came here, parang takot na takot din ako ano, takot na takot din ako. Everyday is still a struggle. Parang medyo natatakot pa rin ako dumuti. But, 
uh, you'll get there and you'll have uh, people that you can ask help for. So, yun nga, disclaimer lang, hindi tayo pare-parehas ng experience, hindi tayo pare-parehas ng practices, but we follow one code, so we just follow the NMC guidelines. So, yeah. So, without further ado, simula na natin. So, I start my day by receiving a handover. So, 7 o'clock, nag-handover na sa amin yung night staff. So, here in the UK, they call it handover sa atin sa Pilipinas. It's endorsement. So, mag-hand over si night staff. So, what we normally do is, uh, nag-hand over kami dun sa day room namin. And then, if there are some specifics, we walk around the wards. So, that takes about half an hour. Kasi, we have 29 patients in our ward. So, dun sa 29 patients na yon sometimes there are three nurses in the daytime. So, parang ang mangyayari is if the ward's full, 10 patients dun sa dalawa and 9 patients dun sa isa. So, uh, minsan full, minsan hindi. And we uh, we have elective surgery. So, minsan yung patients namin come and go. So, minsan uuwi din sila at the same day pag dumating sila post-op. So, yun. So, 29 yung patients namin in our ward. So, kaya medyo matagal yung handover. And then, after the handover, what I uh, do is I start with the meds. Kasi the medication timings are 8 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and 6 evening. Uh, 6 o'clock uh, bago mag-handover ulit. So, sa day staff, tatlong beses kami nagbibigay ng tablets ng medications sa night I think isang beses lang yung nighttime meds lang so I get started with my 8 o'clock meds so half past 7 sinisibulan ko yung tablets ko kasi it takes time to give medication most especially for those patients na medyo challenging pa inumen so what are those patients yung mga yung mga dementia yung mga patients na nahihirapang magswalo ng tablets, eh, I see to it that I see my patients swallowing their tablets. So, gusto ko makita ko nila, iniinom nila yung tablets nila. So, we're in, we are not a medical ward, pero you'll never know if uh, an ortho patient comes in with any medical conditions. So, doon ako medyo nagtatagal. But if the patients are fit and well, then mabilis lang, smooth lang yung medication. So, it's very seldom that you have uh, morning IVs. The night staff do the 6 o'clock meds and sometimes ginagawa na rin nila yung 8 o'clock na IVs. So, it's like they're helping us. So, uh, if duty ako ng night, ganun din yung ginagawa ko. So, wala masyadong IVs uh, ng 8 o'clock. So, minsan, if maaga ako natapos, 9 o'clock tapos na ako, I help the HCAs if they need assistance with washes kasi minsan isa lang yung HCA but we have several patients that needs uh, two people to do the morning wash. So, tinatanong ko sila if there's uh, something that they need. So, once na masettle namin yung mga patients namin, maghihintay na kami ng time to do the OBS, observations or vital signs. So, Dito sa UK, observations yung tawag sa atin, sa Pilipinas, vital signs. So, vital signs are usually due at 11 o'clock. But I have the HCAs start it at half past 10. Kasi we start our breaks at half past 10. So, at least kung ako yung mauuna mag-break, they could start with the uh, OBS. If sila naman yung mauuna mag-break, then at least naggawa na nila yun before they go. Because I want to make sure that I've seen the OBS before I do my care plans. So, care plans is notes. So, dito sa amin, sa hospital namin, we're still doing the charting through paper. So, uh, handwritten pa din yung mga notes namin. I think in other trusts, parang computerized na yung mga uh, care plans nila. So, ayun. So, sulat kamay. So, it takes time. So, before I get started on the care plans, titingnan ko muna kung may mga plans yung mga doctor for our patients, if there are things that needs to be done. Since I'm working on a spinal uh, ward sa ortho, so sometimes we need to do uh, drain removals, 
checking of the wound dressing. So, we have several dressings. Meron kami mga pico, mga vac dressing. So, minsan we need to change that. So, since I'm not trained, I'll have someone to help me change it. So, yun. And I also check COVID swabs. So, regularly, we check COVID swabs and MRSAs for the patient. So, sa amin, yung COVID swab is checked uh, day 1, day 3, day 7, and day 13, and weekly. So, kailangan consistently chine-check mo yung mga due na COVID swabs. While for MRSA, we do uh, upon admission and weekly. So, yun. Uh, chine-check ko na lang siya in the morning just to make sure na walang due para hindi ko rin makalimutan. And if I really don't have time, then I'll hand it over to the night staff or to the next day. If I'm back the next day, I'll make sure na gagawin ko yun. But I'll see to it that what's uh, due, gagawin ko na. Sabi nga nila, because sometimes I'm bothered with the things that I can't do. Parang feeling ko, hindi ko natatapos yung trabaho ko. But one of the sisters told me that uh, we are on a 24-hour care. So if there are things that you didn't do, for as long as it's not uh, immediately needed, so hindi siya urgent, then uh, the next shift can carry on to do the stuff. Pero make sure na wag mo naman din abusuhin. Make sure that uh, you see to it na you've tried your best to do the work. So, once na na-check mo na yung mga notes, uh, you can do your care plans. And yung care plans, uh, medyo marami, medyo kailangan mo siyang isa-isahin. You have uh, the risks, so bed rails assessments, checking ng mga uh, cannulas if they're due for changing, and you have to weigh the patient if they're due. So, medyo maraming sinusulat sa care plan. So, mostly yung care plan is based on the ADLs. So, yung activities of daily living. So, how they are mobilizing, how are they with their personal hygiene, how are they with eating and drinking. So, yun, medyo kailangan talaga. Minsan, I see to it that I sit beside the patient or at least I'm in the bay if the patients are in the bay. Uh, andun lang ako sa loob ng bay and then I take notes. Sometimes I ask them questions kasi during the medication rounds, you can uh, do inspection. You can see if they have IVs, they, if they have any attachments connected to them like drains and backs and everything pero there are some things na hindi mo natatanong agad so I make sure that I'm efficient when I'm giving the meds I ask them if they've opened their bowels if they're having difficulties passing urine or uh, pero minsan hindi ka ganun ka efficient lalo na kapag ka parang nakatatlong araw ka na or nakaapat na araw ka na so yun so, uh, hindi ko natatapos yung care plan ko agad. So, naabutan ako lagi ng break. So, I have a 30-minute break in the morning and another 30-minute break in the afternoon. So, ini-split nila yung break. Uh, the first 30 minutes is paid. The other one's not paid. So, okay lang yun. At least you have time to breathe, have something to drink, kumain. So, Yon. So, once you come back from break, so, pwede ka na mag-carry on with your care plans. And since, uh, nagbe-break kami before lunchtime kasi there are some patients that needs assistance with feeding. There are patients that needs uh, blood sugar checking before they eat their lunch. That's why we take our breaks early. Para at least pagbalik namin, we can check their blood pressures. We can get ready for assisting them to feed. So, yon. So, if uh, nagawa na namin yon and all is well, I can carry on with my care plans. And then, uh, 1 o'clock is the next uh, medication round. So, I start early. So, since I've started early with the morning meds, I can start at half past 12 with the medications. Lunchtime medications are mostly pain relief. So, mga paracetamol, mga ibuprofen, tramadol, yan lang yung mga gamot na madalas binibigay during lunch time and the IV medication so if they're on any IV antibiotics so if they're in uh, IV TAS, IV meropenem, mga IV coamoxiclab 
So, yan. So, yan yung mga IV medication sa so, binibigay ko at 1 o'clock. So, after the medication and the IVs been given, so, pwede ko nang i-carry out yung mga ibang procedure na kailangan kong gawin. Like, if I need some wound dressing change, kasi since it's a surgical ward, so, may mga surgical wounds sila. Sometimes, they need uh, removal ng sutures, may mga change of dressing, so, may mga wound check, mga ganyan. So, ginagawa ko yan after I've done the meds, uh, the lunchtime meds. And, uh, since we have spinal patients as well, some of these patients need uh, turning. So, they need to be turned from time to time. So, tinuturn namin yung mga patients. Some patients needs 2 hourly turning. Some hindi naman masyado. So, we have to make sure na chinecheck namin yung mga pressure areas. And, uh, we're making sure na hindi nagkukos ng mga pressure source. So, kailangan everything's documented. So, every procedure or uh, anything that you've done or anything na nagbago sa OBS ng patient, you make sure that you've documented it because they're big on documentation. You have to make sure that everything's been documented because if you've not documented it, you've not done it. Uh, that's how the afternoon goes. So, uh, kapag wala kaming post-op patients, then... Uh, chill lang, carry lang, you carry on with your work, mag care plan ka lang then you can update your handover sheet, kasi may handover sheet kami, I don't know if that works across all NHS uh, trust naka extra med kami, we're using extra med, so dun ina-update yung handover sheet so uh, ina-update ko na rin siya before I go on my next break Para at least when I come back from my next break, I'll get the IV medications ready for 6 o'clock and I can get my uh, tablets then. I'll do the tablets at 6 o'clock kasi ang next medication is 6 o'clock so you have to get started at 5 kasi may IV ka pa sometimes. Since nga mga immobile, madalas yung mga patients, since nga ortho, hindi sila masyado nakakalakad. So, we're giving Clexane. So, yung mga subcut medyo... Although, mabilis lang. Pero, syempre, ba you have to stop and give the subcut injection to most of them. So, once na natapos na yung medications, you've given all the IVs, you've already updated your handover sheets, then you can print the handover sheets and it's 7 o'clock. So, hindi mo na mamamalayan 7 o'clock na handover na ulit. Mag-handover ka na ulit sa night staff. So, the routine's different if it's night. So, isha-share ko sa inyo on a separate video yung night shift routine because this video is already long as it is. So, isha-share ko naman sa inyo kung ano yung night time uh, shift on my next video. Pero for now, eto lang muna. So, that's how my uh, day goes. So, sorry kasi hindi ko maipakita yung video just for confidentiality. Parang hindi lang din ako magkaroon ng problema sa uh, mga videos na ina-upload ko. So, yun lang yung video ko for today. So, sana may natutunan kayo. Sana nakatulong tong video na to if you're feeling anxious to start your duty in the wards yun lang yung video ko for today please like this video if you like videos like this comment down below if you're also working in a surgical uh, trauma and orthopedic ward and if not then comment down below kung saan ward kayo nag work please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you on my next video bye